Hey guys, this is Mr. Gron, and this is 13.3, the unit circle. Uh, now this is a filled out unit circle. One thing that we do in class is usually to fill out a blank one. Um, but rather than make a video of me filling out a blank one, I just want to take a filled out one and explain all the different parts of it. All right, so this is a circle with a radius of one. So the measurement from the center to the edge of the circle is one unit, and that gives it some very special properties uh, that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, now, all of these degrees in the middle, right, I'm gonna start there, they all represent an angle of rotation. So that 30 degree angle means that we're starting here at zero degrees and we're rotating 30 degrees like that. That's what every single one of those means. Now. When you're thinking about like how this is structured, right? there's a lot of symmetry here. This distance, it's kind of like a big slice of pizza, and then we've got a little slice of pizza. The big slices are 30 degrees, and the little slices are 15. So 30 uh, plus 15 is 45, plus another little slice makes 60, plus a big slice makes 90. And you can do that all the way around to, to fill this out. Um, a half circle is 180, a full circle is 360. You get the idea. Uh, now this next part, all of this layer right here where all of the values have a pi in them, uh, that is what is called a radian. And a radian is a different way of measuring an angle. So instead of like zero to 180 degrees, it's zero to pi radians. It has to do with the measurement of the distance around the circle. So our circumference is equal to, the circumference formula is two pi times the radius of a circle. However, with this, with the unit circle, the radius is one, so it's just two pi for the circumference. So every one of these measurements is also the distance around that portion of the circle, right? And each one represents a fraction of the circle as well. So if we think about, zero to pi is a half is the top part of the circle. Well, pi over six represents one sixth of the way around the top of the circle to pi. Pi over four is a fourth of the way around the top of the circle. Pi over three is a third of the way across the top of the circle. Pi over two is halfway across the top of the circle and so on and so forth and eventually you get all the way around to two pi. All right, the rest of these are x, y coordinates. And then on the outside here, these are a ratio of y divided by x. And I'll explain more about that momentarily. All right, so a couple of things you can notice with the x, y coordinates are the symmetry that's there. Um, there's some obvious ones like this one right here. If this distance is one, then the x value is one and the height is zero, right? These ones are a little less obvious though. Um, the x value is root three over two, the y value is one half. And then when we get to 45 degrees, root two over two and root two over two. When we get to 60 degrees, now it's the same values as 30 degrees, except they flip around. And now the x value is 1 half, and the y value is root 3 over 2. And then when we get to 90, that one's kind of more of an obvious one, too, because it's 0 left and right, and then 1 straight up, so 0, 1. All right, now with the rest of these, um, if we get comfortable with these values, then all we need to do is know what kind of symmetry there is in the graph to figure out the rest of them. Um, if x is positive over here, this one is the same value, same height, so the y value is the exact same, and the x value just changed to negative. That's how you get something to move from this side of the graph to the left side of the graph. Same thing with this. It matches up exactly with the one across from it, except the x is negative, and then same thing here change the x to negative and it's over here. And even the even at 180 degrees, if this is one zero, then across the circle is gonna be negative one zero. All right, we can do the same thing with the rest of them too. If we move these straight down, now the x's and y's are both negative, but they're all the same x and y values as the ones straight above them and as the ones straight across from them. All the ones over here, the x value is positive on the right side of the graph and the y value is negative. All right, so what do these x and y values mean? Uh, let me zoom in here, and we'll take a look at um, just one little section of this. We're gonna take a look at 
this angle, 30 degrees. Now, if I take this 30 degree angle of rotation and I turn it into a right triangle with the x-axis, what's going to happen is, and, and this was true for any triangle on, on this circle, um, the height of that is going to be the y value from my xy coordinate, right? So it would be one half in this case. The horizontal, the adjacent, is going to be the x value, which in this case would be root 3 over 2 for 30 degrees. And the hypotenuse, because it's the unit circle and the radius is 1, the hypotenuse is always 1. Well, now if I start thinking about like how that relates to sine, cosine, and tangent, uh, y is my opposite, x is my adjacent, and the hypotenuse is 1. So for sine, sine, which is going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. My opposite side is always the y value, and my hypotenuse is always 1. So the sine of any angle on the unit circle is just the y value of this coordinate. So if I wanted to know what sine of 30 is, I could just look at my unit circle and say, oh, it's the y value, it's 1 half. Cosine, same idea. The adjacent is x over the hypotenuse 1. Well, that makes it just the x value. So like for sine of or cosine of 30 degrees, I would just find the x value and say cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. All right, now these values on the outside, these are the tangent values because tangent isn't quite as convenient. Um, it's opposite over adjacent, and so that's going to be y over x. So those are a little bit more complicated. Um, so, oops, actually let me leave that on there. All right, so if we, if we zoom back out, if you took and divided um, all, of the, all of the xy values, these are the values that you would get on the outside, right? So 0 divided by 1 is 0. 1 half divided by root 3 over 2, if we rationalize the denominator, is root 3 over 3. This one at 45 degrees is equal to 1 because it's the same number divided by the same number. And then root 3 divided by 1 half, that's just root 3. And then if we do 1 divided by 0, remember when you divide by 0 that that is undefined. So we have some undefined tangent values. And then if you went around and did all of the rest of them, you would see that it's always the same values, but the signs change. In this coordinate, now you have a, a positive y over a negative x, so that makes a negative tangent value. Down here you have a negative y over a negative x, and negatives cancel out and make a positive tangent value. In this quadrant, a negative y over a positive x is going to make a negative tangent value. All right, so a little cheat sheet that you can make for yourself with this. Um, we've got an x coordinate, we've got a y coordinate, and then outside of that in black we have an a y over x coordinate, and how that relates to what you're going to be doing is finding the cosine of an angle, which is the x value, a sine value, which is the y value, and a tangent, which is that extra number that's on the outside of the coordinate. So x and y, they're alphabetical, so are cosine and sine. And then tangent, it's on the outside, still alphabetical because uh, tangent would come after S.